agreeing to do another little session with me. Yeah, of course. I'm excited. Should be fun. So, okay, everybody, if you didn't see the blog that we did before this one, it's worth going back so that you understand where we're heading right now. Carly's actually going to give us a lesson. She is a graffiti quilter, and um, her background is very interesting. Before we go down to your iPad, where you're actually going to show some drawing techniques, I want to take a look at a couple more pages in your sketchbook. Okay. Um, so preface to that these are old these are like 10 years old so don't judge the line work based on 10 years ago but it is cool to see the transition between my work from back then and you can totally see how it ties into my quilts now but like this is a page from like 2007 in my you can see the arrows which are so iconic to graffiti quilting um and this was just, I had no idea what I was doing at the time, but now I realize that I was like pioneering what would now be graffiti quilting. This is another page. So it's a lot more messy, obviously, than what you see with my quilts now. But it's all, that's the beautiful thing is people look at graffiti quilts and they're like, oh, I couldn't do that. But really, I'm just smashing a ton of stuff together. And then it starts to work. Like, you start to see how you can play with different designs and how they can work together. Perfect. Okay, so let's re let's reposition the camera okay. on to your iPad, and um, you're going to show us. I want to say while you're doing this, uh, again, go back and watch the other interview. But Carly comes from a community that is highly Hispanic, and this is where her background comes from and her learnedness about this. So with graffiti quilting, I'm sure you've seen stuff like this, where it's all just like super flowy and smashed together. The idea of graffiti quilting is to take very, very simple shapes like a curl or an arrow or just a half of a feather. And when you put them together, they start to mingle. So like if we think of that quilt specifically, when I designed it, I started in the middle of my page and just did something simple like a swirl. Okay. So now when we move on, maybe with this, we'll add an echo to it. And another huge thing with graffiti quilting is overstitching. Like this, those dark lines, there's no other way to get those on your quilt other than to overstitch it three or four times. So who cares what the quilt police tell you? They'll say, never overstitch, but I don't care. It's my quilt and I'm going to do what I want. So I try to encapsulate that when I'm drawing as well. So maybe with this circle, I might overstitch it three or four times because I want it to be dark. Now, let's say the next design I take is just a simple curl. That by itself is really not that cool. But when we start to get our designs to play together, it's going to look cooler. So maybe from here, I'll add a curl coming off of it and echo it a few times to fill it in. And you're just doing this um, free motion on your um, long arm or domestic or whatever? Um, you can do it on any machine that allows for free motion quilting. So it doesn't have to be a stand-up or a sit-down specifically. Any of those will work. So... Now I have a curl added on that's added a little more detail to the design overall. And I have this really nice little crack in here that I can add something to. So maybe coming out of here, I'm going to do like a um, flower petal shape. Okay. Now that by itself, like we said, is kind of boring. So we all know how to do pebbles and quilting, or at least we've all seen pebbles and quilting. So maybe we'll fill that in with some pebbles. And I'm trying to draw this for you as if I was quilting. I think this is fabulous. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Okay. And then since this has a lot of design inside of it, pretty much what I would always do if I fill something in is either layer it with something that's going to be plain or even do an echo. And that's just going to set it apart from whatever we add next to it. The beauty of this is I don't have to think about what's going to be in here and what's in here. All I'm doing is focusing on one thing and then moving from point to point. So remember how we talked about this nice crack in here to fill in? We just created another one right here. And mind you, I did not plan this out before we started. I'm literally just trying to come up with this on the fly. So, so we have this nice space here. So another thing that is iconic to graffiti quilting is an arrow. So let's add an arrow. So I like to say there are two kinds of arrows. You can either do a straight arrow that's very like a lot like a street sign or you can do an arrow that's a little more curvy which is a lot more graffiti quilting style so I tend towards the curvy one so let's uh, 
So maybe we'll do kind of a curve. Do you travel and teach or is that pretty much impossible right now with your college? Um, I did travel in 2015. I got to go to Canada and England and Ireland and Scotland and Australia to teach graffiti quilting. Yeah, I did like a whole international tour. And then now that I'm back in school, it's a little tougher, but I'm always open to entertaining different places. So if you live somewhere cool and you want to hire me to teach, give me a call. <laughs> So well, also, to too, you mentioned um, while we were getting ready for this, you actually did a Skype uh, yeah. guild thing in Canada. Yeah, I got to do a virtual trunk show with them. And that was so fun because I got to meet the ladies and talk to them. But, they, you know, we didn't have to pay for travel costs or anything. So if you're tech savvy, we could totally do something virtual. I'm just loving this. Okay, so you keep drawing there. Um, but, like, let's pretend like it really was on fabric. Uh -huh. Are they pretty much whole cloth or do you ever think about piecing and leaving blank areas? Um, yes, to both of those. Pretty much okay. all of my personal quilts, especially while I was um, pioneering graffiti quilting, was done on whole cloth quilts because I am terrible at picking out fabric and I'm also terrible at piecing. And so I like to use plain fabric because I learned how to quilt before I learned how to piece. So I pretty much skip the piecing process most days and just go right to quilting. This is just so much fun, I'm telling you, Carly. <laughs> and it's fun when I do an actual in-depth class. Like, one thing that I kind of pride myself on is even though there are a lot of designs to learn, I come up with, like, little stories about each one that makes it more fun and memorable. So. So that makes it kind of fun because I'm like, okay, you're going to learn a ton of designs today, but I'm going to teach you how to remember them in an easy way. So oh, that's, that's kind of fun too. I'm kind of thinking I want that iPad too. Just saying. Um, it's the best. It's sadly, but also happily, it's replaced my need to buy sketchbooks because I just went through so many of them. Can you save that pro? Can you save that then? So you have it yep. as record? Yep. And do you want to see something else that might just blow your mind? So check this out. This was on the on a different file. So as I practice when I'm erasing or adding new things, I can watch the replay and see oh, how oh, it's stitched oh. out. How cool is that? Yeah. Well, put, put the camera back up on your wonderful, happy face. There we go. So mm -hmm. I, I know, I'm just sitting here fascinated watching you. And um, I'm going to show everybody your book again. Awesome. Pull that up. That's great. And uh, self-published, yay. Yep. And you will sign them. I will. If you buy it directly from my website, which helps me the most, I'll write you a love note in the front cover. So. And, the, and she's a college student, people. <laughs> <laughs> Remember back, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's thank helpful. you so much. What is your website again? It's easy, carlyporter.com. And Carly is spelt? Like this. Right. You know what, Carly? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming up to me yeah. at uh, Market. Now, <laughs> this is just meant to be, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, thank you for entertaining me when I'm just like, hi, I just, you don't know me, but I know you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, so. you have a great rest of the day. It's blistering in Utah, but you said it's not that bad at your house right now. <laughs> not too bad, yeah. Luckily, luckily, not Great. too bad yet, but. Great things for you, Missy. Well, thank you so much for having me, and thanks everyone for watching. Mm -hmm.